Is TK crushed the gold standard for complex distal left main stem stenosis? And I'm taking the no standpoint. So just to remind everyone, I know it's the end of two days of talking about this, but the EBC perspectives are very important on this. And that is that for nearly 20 years, uh, the EBC as a whole has decided to approach bifurcations, not in a prejudged manner, but in a stepwise manager, laying, laying the complexity in as necessary and stopping when we have a good result. You end up sometimes with two stents, but only when necessary. So for example, if you have a left main stem stenosis, you'll stent the main vessel and then do proximal optimization. And then ask yourself, how does it look? Do we need to do anything more? If we do, then we rewire the side branch and do a kissing inflation. And at that stage, you'll stop and ask, do we need to do some more? If we do, we'll stem the side branch, do a kiss, perhaps a repot. Do we need to do more? So at each stage, it's logical, it's rigorous, and most importantly, it's versatile, it's flexible. It offers the option to do less rather than more. You may have heard this a few times at this meeting, but I do love it. As Jens Lassen likes to say, if you start with one stent, you can always end up with two. But if you start with two stents, you can't end up with one. So why is it that DK Crush has taken the plaudits and to the extent that, rather to my surprise, it went straight into the guidelines? Well, firstly, you've got to give enormous credit to the team of Xiaoyang Chen, who've produced an enormous body of work on DK Crush with numerous studies. And secondly, perhaps there are some geographies in particular, but certainly it's a, it's a concept for us all that if the immediate angiographic result is very satisfying, that's quite seductive. So let's just look briefly at the drawbacks of DK Crush and why it shouldn't be the gold standard. Well, its, it's biggest drawback probably is its inflexibility. It commits you to two stents right from the start. And as we've seen from EBC Maine, that's not any longer necessarily supported by the whole body of data that we've now accumulated with EBC Maine showing a very neutral result for European patients. DK Crush requires many steps for completion, at least 10. And it is true that every additional procedural step you have to do offers you an innovative and creative way to totally mess up the case. And not that this is necessarily worth anything, but I've said it probably every year since the EBC started, and that, and that is that there's nothing more likely to go wrong than a complicated bifurcation strategy undertaken as something of a novelty. And we all see this in our clinical practice. We see a case done, maybe not in our hospital, maybe somewhere else, and you think, oh my God, they did, they did what? But that must have been the first time they've done that in a year. Why did that happen? So of course it went wrong. The third drawback, I think, is simply that there's a triple layer of stent on the inner curvature here. You would never design a strategy to have that. It's a mild limitation. Perhaps more importantly, though, it is a technique where rewiring outside the stented area is quite possible. As you can see, in this case, if you rewire into this stent vacuum, you will then crush the stent more and create an area where there is dissection, but no coverage with stent. That's not a good outcome. That's not gonna give you a good long-term result. I'm quite surprised that that doesn't result in measurable adverse clinical outputs in the, in the DK crush studies. We've heard from David Day about the comparison between the two studies. So I'm not gonna discuss this in much detail, except to make a couple of points. Where the pot happened, during the DK crush study is unclear. If it didn't occur at the start after the first tent, that may contribute to the slightly underwhelming results in the provisional group. 
Of course, if you have one group against another, but in the one group you have nearly 50% take the second strategy, you're going to limit the difference you can see between them. The stent thrombosis rates were surprisingly high for the provisional, perhaps surprisingly low for the DK. And I think this is a major drawback, which does have to be mentioned. There was clearly an oculostenotic reflex around the time of the angiography, which was supposed to be after the 12 month follow up, but didn't always happen there. And this is no doubt contributed to the difference between the two groups in terms of target lesion revascularization. Briefly, the anatomy was different in the two studies, 16 versus seven millimeters in DK crush versus EBC main, and the syntax scores were different. So basically from the European point of view and maybe the US point of view, we don't see these lesions really. These are lesions which pretty much require a stent in their own right. If it's 16 millimeters long and it's significant, well, you're going to stent it. So this all suggests to me that the Chinese patients are different in the way that they present and the type of disease and the anatomy, and that the Chinese approach is different. There's a philosophy bias. The Europeans, their heart is in provisional. The Chinese group as a whole, perhaps, their heart is more in DK crush from their experience with that. And they're clearly very, very good at it. Perhaps they're not quite so good at provisional in the same way that we probably wouldn't be very good at DK crush if we now took it up. So I think my conclusions really for this description of why I think DK crush is not the gold standard is that firstly, it's clear that you can use a provisional or a systematic technique, probably interchangeably in those with definition style distal left main stems. A provisional resulting in two stents is equally applicable to the systematic dual. And I think really, you know, this argument is starting to get a little bit um, skewed. I don't think it's about DK crush as such, and it shouldn't be. It, it, the main thing is, if you're doing a complex left main bifurcation, you should learn a technique and apply it rigorously and carefully and get good at it. And so I don't think the DK crush is itself the gold standard because Overall, actually, the technique itself is much less important than its application. Thank you.